All right, nearly eight months after the catastrophic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, residents there say they are still suffering and dealing with the toxic fallout from the hazardous chemicals released into their community. News Nation has been covering this story from the very start, and we have never stopped. And in just a few moments, we'll be joined by Chris Cuomo, who's there on the ground tonight speaking with residents about the cleanup. But no one knows the situation there better than News Nation's Rich McHugh, who joins us now for more on the serious health symptoms some people have developed since the derailment. Rich, you've been there from the very start, breaking news all the time on this. What have you got tonight? Hi, Elizabeth. So you'd think by now the issues here would be dissipating, but people are sick, they're struggling, and you're about to hear from one man whose struggles to this point are some of the worst we've heard. I heard a noise, and then all of a sudden there was a hell of a fire. John Kent was at home one mile east of the site of the Norfolk Southern train derailment. It was much higher than 100 foot tall trees on the back of my property. Was the smoke at that point blowing over your, your house, your property? Yes, absolutely. Right overhead? It, yeah, oh yeah. It was low overhead. They were maybe 10 feet above the horses' heads, the emissions. These are pictures he took that day. You can see the smoke hovering over his horses. He evacuated them that night. Three days later, officials conducted an open burn of five tank cars full of vinyl chloride. The toxic smoke blanketed the area. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get out of here. Residents were told to evacuate. We moved maybe 10 miles away and we were still breathing in the stuff. It was like mustard gas or something for lack of better description. Were you concerned for your health at that point? No, that was my least concern. My concern was my wife who has fragile health to begin with uh, and the animals that I take care of. Two weeks after the burn, I met John and wife Julie at their home. A little bit of eye discharge. Since then, life has taken a sharp turn. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say this is a 10 for alteration of my life. On the morning of April 21st, John fell to the ground. I went to the nightstand after I had gotten a shower and I went down and had a grand mal seizure. Julie had found me like that because I was, you know, shaking the furniture and everything. I went to the hospital. I was kind of like, mm, I had a seizure. Didn't seem like a, a thing that I believed at that minute because I had never had one before. They did a CT scan and then MRI and they didn't find anything. What did your, I guess, neurologist say? He says that the derailment uh, was a, a very impactful event in my life and that it perpetuated my grand mal seizures. Um, in the sense that I would have likely never had a single seizure event had it been, not been for these, these happenings. John's hospital intake papers say no history of seizure epilepsy, but do not elaborate on any connection to the derailment. Today, the 35-year-old arborist and former semi-pro football player looks like a shell of his former self. He can no longer drive or operate machinery. Any major health event that you've ever had up until this point that some doctor could say, hey, that might have been connected with this? I've never had a broken bone or even a concussion. To date, John says he's had five seizures, the last one in August. He was diagnosed with partial symptomatic epilepsy with complex partial seizures. As for possible causes, the National Institutes of Health say there are many that half of the people living with them do not know the cause. Some cases are genetic, linked to developmental brain abnormalities, and some result from infection, traumatic brain injury, stroke, brain tumors. And they say anything that disturbs the normal pattern of nerve cell activity from illness to brain damage to brain development problems can lead to seizures. They also list stress and exposure to toxins. Dr. Beatrice Gallom was appointed by the White House to study the link between toxins and Gulf War veteran illnesses. Dr. Gallom, is it conceivable, in your medical opinion, somebody who's been living here in the area after the train derailment, that their seizures that they've been having are in some way related to the derailment and the burn here? It is absolutely conceivable. Multiple ones of the toxins, even that we know about, uh, have potential to damage what are called mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses of cells, and cause free radical injury. And those mechanisms have again and again been implicated in increasing risk of seizures. And it's a very scary thing because uh, this has made me think of death in a different way in the sense that, you know, 
people seem to worry about that for themselves. At this point, I am no longer worried about that. I am worried about it for my wife. It's like, what happens if I am not there to care for her or for her to, to depend on? Now John plans to join a class action lawsuit against Norfolk Southern. It is important to note, and I want to read this, while that suit does not assert claims about his or other class members' specific medical condition, it does seek redress for area residents who have suffered, quote, loss of use and enjoyment of property, property damage, exposure to toxic material, inconvenience, disruption, and economic damages. It also seeks medical monitoring program for health issues that may arise from exposure to, quote, toxic substances, toxic fumes, and carcinogens. I also want to say we asked Norfolk Southern for an interview with their CEO last week, and they did not respond. Elizabeth. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.